All right, there we go. Uh, welcome to another edition of Round Ball Stew. I am your host today, Jared Johnson, subbing in for the great Matt Strout. And I am joined today by Noah Rubin. So it's draft guide season, y'all. Uh, I mean, not for purchasing it, but for putting it together. Uh, I've spent the past few weeks writing about <laughs> 30 pages of player news and notes. And uh, today I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the takeaways that both Noah and I have found uh, while going through all this data. So uh, let's get right into it. Let's start in Chicago. I want to talk about Lonzo Ball, who was a, he was a top 30 player on a per game basis last year. Uh, 13 points, 5.4 rebounds, 5.1 assists, 3.1 triples, 1.8 steals, 0.9 blocks, and just 2.3 turnovers per game. Uh, however, he only made it through 35 games. And the way he went down last year was particularly concerning to me uh, because he had an arthroscopic knee procedure, which is like typically the least invasive kind of surgery. Typically, guys get back you know, four to six, four to eight weeks. Uh, he was given a six to eight week timetable. And um, there's been reports this off season, six months past surgery, that he might not be ready for the start of the year. Now, like this is a guy that we all know, you know, he, he's a stud when he's out there. He's a, he's a fantasy stud. There's no denying that. But his ability to stay on the floor has just been a serious issue throughout his career. Um, you know, he's, he's only had really one healthy season and only twice in, in five years in the league has he been available for every game in March. Not good. Not good for fantasy hoops. Uh, so when I was like putting this together, I was pretty low on him. Uh, and then I checked the Yahoo ranks. Now the Yahoo ranks could change between now and as we approach the draft season. Um, but he's 55, Noah. He's ranked 55. <laughs> That is very little of a discount. Like, I understand that he was a top 30 player. Like, was he really, though? Was he really? And I don't know. Just just if, it, if his rank is 55, I don't think I'm interested. I don't think I'm interested this year. How, how do you feel about uh, Mr. Lonzo Ball? Yeah, at 55, that's just insane to me. Like, yeah. I I can't imagine taking him that early or even within the few rounds after just because of the way that the knee has progressed or really not progressed over the course of the summer. We finally got an update about a month ago that actually used the word, hey, the knee is progressing. Before that, it was, we have no idea why, but it's just not getting better. So that, that six to eight week timetable you mentioned, it just it's laughable at this point. I mean, yeah. he's phenomenal when he's out there and he's... He fits in really well with Chicago and what they want to do. Uh, but it's is he going to be out there? We have no idea. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, maybe we'll get more clarity as we get to, the, you know, training camp and stuff. But, you know, if, he, if he's at all limited at training camp, that's going to be extremely concerning for me. Like, this is a surgery right. that happened a really long time ago at this point. Like, he should he should be fine. Um, I kind of want to – so – because of this, like I like Alex Caruso as a late round target. You know, he's had health, he's had trouble staying healthy too, but this is a guy that you can get in the late round. Um, have you ever really delved into Ayo Dasunmu? Because I was really low on him when I was writing his his outlook, just because of all the stuff that's going on. Like when this team is healthy, I don't know. Like, even if Lonzo Ball is out, but if Alex Caruso's there. Who's, who's going to start between those two? I mean, the crazy thing is it could end up being Goran Dragic, because I think. That's true. That's so true. who knows what Chicago opts to do. I mean, Caruso and uh, Desumu both are excellent defenders, so they'll be on the floor, but it just depends on how much, because Lonzo Ball is also a really good defender. So for Chicago, they're in a great spot, because whoever's healthy is going to be able to play defense really well, and they have plenty of scoring, obviously, in other areas. But who they end up starting with, I don't know. But I do really like the sumo. Uh, there was the quote, I think, from Kendall Gill yeah, uh, where he said that he just improves every single season. And he's been watching him since he was playing AAU. So could definitely see him continuing to progress. How much more? I don't know. Is it enough to start at point guard if Lonzo's out? I guess we'll just have to see. Maybe hopefully by training camp we'll kind of see how that plays out. 
Yeah. Yeah. That was the blurb that caught my eye. I was like, oof, mm-hmm. maybe I shouldn't be so low on this guy. <laughs> I mean, he did show flashes. It's just like, you know, he showed flashes when everyone was hurt. And, you know, as low as I am on Lonzo, I don't think he's going to miss the entire season. He'll be back at some point. Shouldn't. And like once that happens, how valuable is is someone like Caruso or uh, Io going to be? Um, yeah, so that's that's Chicago. Uh, so let's head on down to Los Angeles. Uh, I believe that you brought up Norman Powell. So I was just go ahead and toss the mic to you and, and let you set that one up. Yeah, Norman Powell is really interesting. Really, the whole Clippers team is just because they're very deep and they have multiple guys at every position that can really score or just do a lot of different things. Um, last season, I believe uh, in nine, Ket Norman Powell was a top 100 guy and has been for the past three seasons. Um, the last time he wasn't was, I believe, the season that Kawhi Leonard was in Toronto and he just didn't see as many minutes, as many shots. Um, and now he's back playing with Kawhi again and Paul George and a bunch of other guys that can score. So while he's probably just looking really quickly at the the depth chart, he's probably the third best scoring option in my opinion. Yeah. So he'll still get shots, but it's got to be how many is he really getting? Because the last season Kawhi was there, he got about seven shots a game. And then last season he was shooting 13 shots a game. So what kind of role he has will just be interesting to see. Does he start? Do they bring him off the bench? Because um, they have – also, Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard at shooting guard, too. So we'll have to see. I've, I'm, we may not even know until a few games in exactly what his role looks like. But it'll be interesting to see exactly how Tyron Liu uses all this talent that he has. Yeah. Yeah, Norman Powell, I mean, he used to be kind of a darling. And I think he's turned out a little bit boring. Um, for me, it's kind of like, can he average over a steal per game? Because he did it once. Mm-hmm. He averaged 1.2. Can he do 1.2 again? He was at, I think, one last, the past handful of years. Uh, I think it was 0.9 in the limited games with the Clippers uh, last year. You know, I know that he can score upwards of 15 points. I know that he can hit three-pointers. I think he can do that efficiently. But he's going to give you, like, two dimes, not that many rebounds, and so for me, it's really, can he can he average more than a steal per game? And if he can't, then he's basically just a top 100 player. And there's nothing wrong with taking a top 100 player when you get to the 100 range. But, you know, there, I feel like there's not a lot of upside uh, to Norman Powell. It would be entirely based on Paul George and Kawhi Leonard continuing to not stay healthy, which it is right. the Clippers. Right. And with their injury luck the past few seasons, it would be shocking, but... It's looking right right now. If everybody stays healthy, it's it's not that Norman Powell's going to be bad. He's just not going to get the opportunities that right. he has the past couple seasons. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and then you also had Evisa Zubats. Yeah. Um, you know, same thing with uh, Tyron Lue last season. It's it's how much is he going to play? He played twenty four point four minutes per game with Isaiah Hartenstein uh, playing about eighteen a game. There was multiple games where it'd be. Uh, Zubats would play 23 minutes. Hartenstein would play 18. And then even when they had Serge Ibaka, he'd play seven. Like they wouldn't really play them together. But if you look at the Clippers roster right now, the only other center is Moses Brown. And he's, I believe, just on a training camp contract. Like he's not even fully guaranteed a roster spot, which he could still end up getting it. But does that mean Zubats ends up getting north of 30 minutes a game? If he can get that, I mean, that's a double-double, a block and a half, efficient shooting, that's that's much better than he has been, and it's a very solid asset. Yeah, uh, for Zubats, it's I'm just I understand like the allure of 30 minutes. I'm not sure right. Zubats can get 30 minutes consistently. Like if you look at the games where he did get 30 minutes, is when they were going against like traditional centers. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if those guys aren't there. I'm not sure that means he's getting 30 minutes. Right. And can he average like one block a game? Can he average what a, a little bit more than one block a game? Yeah. That, then I'd be really interested. Um, but I don't know. I'm just like kind of just like the lumbering center kind of thing. It's just how long can you have him on the floor, uh, especially when you're going up against the small ball teams, because 
you can kind of pick them apart. But, you know, you're right. Like Moses Brown being there. There's also uh, Bob Covington who's going to get those some mm-hmm. center minutes. Um, but still, I think that he's kind of a late round guy. You know, he's if you if you're in the late rounds and you need a big, he's certainly someone that could be there. He could definitely improve a little bit on his numbers from last year. Um, I'm not sure it's a breakout kind of year, but definitely, you know, like a quality center that you can have on your team. Yeah, and you mentioned Covington. They'll probably try some small ball lineups with him, maybe even with Nick Batum. Who knows what Lou will do? I mean, he's a great coach. We'll try those lineups just to see if they work. So, yeah, it, it may not be north of 30 minutes a game, but should be more than 24, um, which he was 10.3 points, eight and a half rebounds, and a block a game in 24 minutes. So if it can get a few extra, probably bumps up his value a little bit. Can he bump up that to 1.5 blocks? That's what I would love to see 1.5 Fingers blocks. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let's stick in LA. Uh, Mr. Lonnie Walker, who joined the Lakers this summer. Yeah. Um, last season, we saw a very similar situation uh, with LA signing a young shooting guard who just couldn't really figure it out with the team that drafted him in Malik Monk, signed a one year deal with the Lakers and had the best season of his career. Um, and Lonnie Walker. I believe he uh, Malik Monk hadn't been a top 200 guy before that, but was top 150 last season. Mm-hmm. So can Lonnie Walker make that same jump in a similar role? I think it's possible. I think he's, you know, he's a, a solid defender, but you don't really see it in the stats. And I think that's kind of what he wants to bring. But he's also averaged, he averaged about 12 points a game last season. And I believe Malik Monk, the season before he went to LA, was like 11 point something. Um, and then upped it to 13 and had that stretch of games where he just couldn't miss. Cause I remember because it was against the Hawks and Malik Monk <laughs> had like 30 on nine threes. And I was like, this is not the guy that's supposed to be beating us. When <laughs> it was either LeBron or Anthony Davis was out. It was just unreal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think that Lonnie has potential. I, he caught my eye when that signing happened. I thought it was a good signing for the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he was kind of off last year. He just shot 31.4 from distance but before that uh you know he was his career average was at 36.9 like i want more three pointers from him like i would like one still per game i don't know if he can do that um but i i do see the potential here you know like the depth chart is nothing at, at that <laughs> at that position it's austin reeves and it's it's lottie walker i guess yeah. tht if you want to give him minutes there DJA, if you want to play him out of position, um, like that, there's definitely opportunity there. So, like, uh, you know, uh, that's a guy who I like uh, taking a flyer on. Uh, I just want let's see if he can do a little bit more statistically, but the potential's there. Yeah, and I remember keeping up with some Spurs games last season, mostly just box score watching. But it seemed like every time he got in, he was just trying to shoot as much as he could, and every time he started, he had a yeah. big game uh, just because he would shoot every time he. He got it. So I don't know if there was something going on there with uh, him thinking he was going to get a bigger role. And then over the years, they just drafted more and more young guards that kind of right. took his spot. So right. we'll see if the fresh start in L.A. can help him out. Yeah. Sometimes guys just need to change, uh, change the scenery and, and they can really uh, find their role in the NBA. Uh, let's move on to Memphis. I would like to talk about one of my favorite players in the league, Mr. Ja, Durant, ja Morant. Um, look, I love John Morant, but I just, his knee issues last year were a little bit concerning to me. Uh, it was his right knee. He injured it three times and it, it, it was, this is the same knee that he had arthroscopic surgery on, uh, after being drafted. Um, so there's, I don't want to like freak out about one season uh with knee issues but it's just like the way that he plays the way that he explodes like that's a lot of pressure on your lower extremities and uh you know the year before it was an ankle injury and yes he does tend to recover from this stuff way quicker than you'd anticipate but like three times in one season he's see his season ended with a right knee bone bruise i believe um so you you take all that into account and then you look at his at his uh, Yahoo rank right now, which is uh, 14. That's high, man. That is, 
I was fine with a fourth round pick last year, even though it was like debatable whether you should have. You should have. A, a, like a, a second, like I understand second round, but if he's ranked 14, that's like early second round. And how much can he realistically improve on his top 40 campaign last season? Like his numbers were great 27.4 points, career high, 5.7 boards, career high, 6.7 dimes, 1.5 triples, career high, 1.2 steals, career high, uh, 0.4 blocks, career high. He shot 49.3% from the floor while adding those three pointers, also a career high. You know, I could see him like at 30 points a game. Um, is he going to get much more than 1.5 triples? Maybe that's like 1.8. I think really it's going to come down to can he get to 7.5 dimes? And can he get to like 1.5 steals? That's that's the only way you could really justify. I mean, he's young. He's going to take another leap. And he's going to have the ball in his hands more, assuming Jaron Jackson Jr. has to spend uh, an inordinate amount of time on the sidelines. That just means more opportunity for Ja. Um, Dylan Brooks is also going to be healthy. He's going to be firing up shots randomly. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I... <sighs> Like a, a high second round pick. How do you feel about that for King Ja? Man, it's high. I mean, it's <laughs> it's high. Especially, I mean, you mentioned the knee injuries. It's concerning, especially when you look at how he plays, obviously. Right. It's so, so fun to watch, but it's just kind of scary for his his long term health. I mean, yeah. I'm sure everybody has already made the comparison of Derrick Rose and just watching him have an incredible season and then watching him there's ACL and then it just seemed like injury after injury. And obviously we really hope that doesn't happen at job, but it's something I pray that, that doesn't happen. Though. Exactly. I don't want to, even, I don't want to hear ACL. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Excuse me. Apologies. But um, <laughs> it's something that, you know, you have to consider, especially if you're taking him at 14 in the early second, it's, do you right. want to spend that pick on a guy that, I mean, like you mentioned, he'd probably have to just really drop the turnovers, uh, add to the steals, the threes, a few extra assists, and it's can you expect all of that out of him just one season after having such a breakout season? I don't know. It's a lot to ask. Um, and I just I don't know if he's able to make a leap to warrant being uh, 14 and early second. I just don't right. see it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot to get there. Right. Um, I kind of touched on Jaron Jackson Jr., but, you know, he has a stress fracture in his foot. Stress fractures are awful. This is an injury. Also, Jaron Jackson Jr. does not have a great history with uh, staying on the floor. Um, you know, stress fracture, it, it derailed Brook Lopez's career for, for years. Um, he was given a four to six month, no, yeah, four to six month timetable. Um, so it, that means like in a best case scenario, he's going to come back. Uh, I think he Late would miss the first league. couple weeks of the regular mm -hmm. season. Yeah. I don't know about best case scenario here because this is just a guy who's had so much trouble staying on the floor. And here's the worst part is that he plays for Memphis. We're not going to get any updates on this injury until he's like ready to play. Like I'm not ex expecting to have any clarity here. He, we could be in training camp and he could be like ready for the regular season. We won't know it until like opening night. That's just yeah. how Memphis rolls. And I could also see them being extremely cautious here. Maybe he doesn't play till after Christmas. Maybe it's longer than that. You know, this is an injury that you could have a setback. Um, so he's just basically completely off. And I think the obvious guy here is Brandon Clark. Um, per, 30, per 36 last season, 19.2 uh, points, 9.9 rebounds, 2.5 dimes, 1.1 uh, steals, two swats per contest. And uh, let me check right here. Uh, he is 106. 106 in Yahoo right now. I love that. Like, I am fine with taking him 106. I honestly wouldn't mind reaching for him um, about 20 picks earlier than that, to be honest with you. I think that he could have a really great year. Um, he, he kind of was kind of a top 100 player last year, uh, even with JJJ healthy. So... I think he could get off to a hot start. I feel like this could kind of be Brandon Clark's season. 
Yeah, I mean, we really don't know when Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to be back, like you mentioned. So four to six months, it could end up being longer than that, like you mentioned, with a setback. And with the way that Memphis operates, I mean, we saw last season when Ja missed time, yeah. it was next man up, and they still had no problem just winning games. I don't remember exactly what the record was when Ja was out, but it was something it was that – good. <laughs> yeah, it, it was way too good to be, like, missing their guy who was in the MVP race and still have that record. Um but if you look at Jaron Jackson Jr. actually only missed four games last season, which was really surprising to me. I guess I didn't realize just how healthy he's able to stay. And one of yeah. them was the last game of the season when they rested everybody. Um, but when he didn't play, Xavier Tillman actually got a couple starts, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me see this last one. Uh, so, sorry, he got one start, and Kyle Anderson, I believe, got the other two. So I – Still think Brandon Clark's the the logical starter, but I wouldn't be shocked if they also use Xavier Tillman, like you mentioned. Uh, but both guys were very solid when Jaron Jackson didn't play, uh, scoring in double figures a couple times, getting rebounds. I think uh, there's this one, Xavier Tillman, in the last game uh, in early April that Jaron Jackson missed, 13.6 rebounds, 7 assists, and a steal, while Brandon Clark had 11 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 2 steals. So... You mentioned Brandon Clark. I still think Brandon Clark is the obvious guy, uh, but I know you also were wanting to talk about Xavier Tillman, and I think that's also a very, very solid option. Yeah, I think that, that I like that you brought him up. Um, so during his rookie campaign, when Jaron Jackson Jr. only played in 11 games, uh, Xavier Tillman actually saw 12 starts throughout, uh, over the course of the season, and he had 10.5 points, 7.9 rebounds, 1.3 assists, 1.1 steals, 1 block, 1.1 turnovers, uh, efficient scoring except for the free throw shooting. So, you know, that was two years ago. Like, he, he's better now, and he just really didn't get an opportunity to play last year because Jaron Jackson Jr. was pretty much healthy. Um, so I do think that, like, I think everyone has their eyes on Brandon Park. Like, guys like Xavier, Xavier Tillman, uh, even the rookie David Roddy, perhaps even Santi Alderman, like, all these guys are going to have opportunity early in the year. Um, and it, that could extend later into the season. Um, also with just Kyle Anderson being gone, like, there's minutes to fill. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think that Xavier Tillman is, like, kind of a sneaky uh, deep league target like a, a last round kind of flyer sort of deal because he has shown flashes whenever he's got time. He's just, it's been a little bit of an issue for him to find uh, meaningful minutes on that team. Yeah. And also Kenny Lofton Jr., the other rookie uh, who was really exciting during summer league. And I believe in the draft combine as well. Yeah. He could also be a, a good, uh, good fill in as well. And then even after Jaron Jackson Jr.'s back, like you mentioned, they don't want to see any setbacks or re-injuries. So they could still be valuable after that. Yeah, the only thing with Kenny Lofton is you know, he's on a two-way deal, and I, I forget. I remember last year that they, they removed the games played limit for two-way players. Uh, I think it used to be like forty games or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still in effect, but um, if he's actually on the roster, yeah, that's that's another guy uh, yeah. you could think about. Uh, we are going to talk some more. I'm going to get into Portland, but first. We're going to do an ad read. <laughs> uh, just a reminder, if you don't have NBC Sports Predictor app powered by PointsBet, go and download it now. The contests are free and easy to play. And you have a shot at winning thousands by predicting what will happen in Major League Baseball, on the PGA Tour, and NASCAR Circuit. We also have special contests on Tuesdays and Thursdays called Battle of the Bets, where you can agree or disagree with our experts for a shot to collect some cash boom did it all right moving on to portland um this is this is an interesting one to me uh josh hart i was like i just kind of wrote him up i didn't check his yahoo rank or whatever um you know he was a top 75 player last season on the on the whole um and when he got to portland uh the tanking trailblazers at the time uh, he just went off. He had 19.9 points, 50.3% uh, shooting from the field, 5.4 rebounds, 4.3 dimes, 2.4 triples, 1.2 steals, and just 2.5 turnovers per game. 
Now, that's just a sample size of 13 games. It's a sample size that doesn't involve, <laughs> I don't think, uh, yeah, no, Yusuf wasn't there, Simons was already out, and Willard was already out. So, you know, obviously he's not going to average 19.9 points per game, but I do think he's pretty much penciled in as the starting small forward, um, and he's just kind of been a sneaky top 100 kind of player over the past handful of years. He's a really good rebounder for a guard. Uh, he's a solid playmaker. He can hit three. He does a little bit of everything. And uh, his current rank is 142. So that means you can take a late round flyer on this guy, assuming his rank doesn't change all that much. Like how, how much higher is they going to bump him up? I just think that he has a top 75 floor. So if you're going to tell me someone has a top 75 floor and I can get them in like the last round, I'm all on that. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, he won't score as much as he did, like you mentioned, uh, towards the end of last season, just because Dame, Anthony Simons will all be back and ready to shoot the ball. But Josh Hart's game has never been just scoring. It's always been right. – everything he's a glue yeah. guy he just kind of fills whatever roles needed he's a guy you'd love to have on your team but he's also a guy that you probably want on your fantasy team just because he just fills he wears so many hats yeah you know if if dame is out and they need him to score he can do that if they need him you know as a defender a facilitator a, he's a great rebounder for a guard i think he's a guy that like you mentioned if you can get him in the last round for sure if you need to get him a few rounds before that go ahead and I'd say go for it because, like you mentioned, top 75 floor. I right. don't know if he can go even higher than that. That's kind of crazy. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, he was pretty impressive in Portland. Like, top 75, man, you, should, you need to be ranked higher than 142. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, and, like, multiple years in a row. Uh, I also want to just kind of touch on Simons. He is currently ranked 100 in Yahoo after posting top 50 numbers as a starter. Um, you know, I, I don't expect him to completely replicate what he was doing with Dame off the floor last season. He had like 22 points and 5.5 dimes. But, you know, like 18 points, four triples, four dimes, that seems reasonable to me. And also fun to have on a fantasy team. So uh, if he stays in that 100 range, man, I, like I'm, I would take him in the 80 range, to be honest with you. Uh, how do you feel about science? I mean, like you said, Dame back, he's not going to be hitting five threes a game like he was right. for that stretch last season. But Dame played with CJ McCollum for years. So yes. I, I could definitely see Simons just stepping in and filling in a role like CJ, where he's just asked to score a ton and facilitate a little bit, secondary ball handler behind Dame. Um, you won't see five threes a game just ever, but you could still see a handful. Like you could see three, three and a half threes a game, and he's a really, really good scorer. Um, just a fun guy to watch too. If that if that matters to you, then and you just want fun guys to watch, uh, then Simons is definitely a great guy to get. Especially would you say like around a hundred? If you can get him around then, I mean that's that's an excellent find. Yeah, and that's like like you said, it's like he's stepping into CJ McCollum's role. CJ McCollum had a really important role on this team, so mm -hmm. I'm just not I'm nervous, nervous about. about Dame being back and him falling off the cliff. No, like, they paid him $100 million. They want him to step into that role. So, yeah. Uh, I think that it's time to go ahead and move on to Houston. I think you had a, a point guard from Houston that you'd like to talk about. Yeah, the point guard for Houston, Kevin Porter Jr., <laughs> now that uh, they let Dennis Schroeder go. I don't, I don't even think Schroeder signed anywhere, but I can – I don't Probably think so. can basically guarantee that they're not going to bring him back. So no. <laughs> this is uh, KPJ's team to run. Um, he's fighting for a contract at this point, like playing for a contract. He doesn't I believe if uh, he doesn't get some sort of extension, he can be a restricted free agent or get a qualifying offer next summer. Um, so he's going to want to try and prove that he deserves to be the point guard long term. Um, and over the final month of the season, I believe he was a top 50 guy in nine cat. Um, so, you know, obviously with teams practically tanking and just resting guys, Houston never really did that, which was very encouraging. If you're going to take Houston guys that down the stretch, they weren't like, eh, let's improve our lottery odds. Like let's bench these guys. They did it the right way and still had the best odds. They still had the worst record in the league. So there's no real competition for him. 
Um, Ty Ty Washington, they just drafted, but I mean, KPJ would have to be very, very bad to start the season for them to just hand the keys to Ty Ty right off the bat. So God, I'm not so. saying, yeah, I'm not saying he's going to be a top 50 guy, but um, he definitely has the potential to be better than his rank, which I don't know if, off the top of my head if you have it. But So I'm looking at his stats over this final month, and these are honestly surprising. Guys. First time I'm pulling them up because a little bit off my radar last season. Uh, you know, I was a huge Jalen Green fan. I don't know how well they worked there. But look at these stats. 20.4 points, 5.4 boards, 6.6 times, a steal, 0.6 blocks. And then this is my favorite part right here. 44.2% shooting. I did not know that was possible. It's a 15-game stretch, but still. Yeah. And 80 point, 80% at the strike. Mm-hmm. Like, the issue with KPJ is, like, can you not kill me in three categories? Like, yeah. can you not kill me in field goal percentage, free throws, and turnovers? Mm-hmm. And I guess the answer right there at the last little month right there is yes. He's capable yeah. of doing it. Now, you know, like, an, over the course of the season, yeah, he's a shot. Like, he, I don't know how how nice that is field goal percentage will be over the course of an entire season. But if you're playing in head-to-head leagues, like you can take like the good with the bad there a little bit more. Uh, less so in Roto formats. But I don't know. Like that that's that's interesting to me. And him being in contract year, like he needs to prove his worth. Mm-hmm. That like he's certainly not a max contract player. So, no. so how how high does that pay they get? And he's young. So there's a lot of I guess a lot of pluses here. I think just looking at that that last month, I got a little bit more on board. With, uh, Mr. Yeah. And his rank right now, I just looked, is 99. So, I mean, he can definitely, That's I think, easy. surpass that. So, yeah. I don't think it's bad value at all at that rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's reasonable. Um, let's go ahead and go to Indiana. One of my favorite players here. Uh, Mr. Mr. Isaiah Jackson. Jackson. Uh, this is one of your guys. I'll let you, let you pass the mic to you for this. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure this. you already know all the stats. Any stat I bring up about Isaiah Jackson, I'm sure you already have. But one of my favorite stats to look at, especially with guys that just don't get a ton of playing time, is the per 36 stats. Yes. Um, last season per 36, he averaged 19.8 points, 9.9 rebounds, 1.7 steals, and 3.5 and blocks. Um, unfortunately, I believe with that, it was also 6.1 fouls. So it's pretty much off the table (laughs) that he'd be able to actually, uh, play that much, especially with the other bigs they have there and just being a young team, not really competing. They probably won't play anybody 36 minutes a game, but the potential is definitely there. We talked about Jaron Jackson Jr. earlier. Um, obviously Isaiah Jackson doesn't have quite the hype level of being a top five pick, but he seems like a guy to me that has all the fantasy potential in the world, especially as a shot blocker. Yeah. He just can't stay out of foul trouble. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's something that young bigs tend to struggle with. So I'm pretty confident he can turn that around. Um, you know, Miles Turner is there. I, I think, I think, I think even with Miles Turner there, I'm still pretty much all in because this is a guy who can honestly provide solid fantasy numbers in 20 to 25 minutes a game, which I do think he could do even with Miles Turner. So I'm basically all in on Isaiah Jackson. Uh, I'm a sucker for blocks. And uh, real quick here, he's currently ranked 353. So you can get him with a last round pick, and I think that is an excellent last round pick. Um, yeah, not many people can block shots like this guy. It's funny is that they have like Miles Turner and then him, Isaiah Jackson backing him up. It's like, can anyone get a bucket on this team? No. Uh, it's a great, great problem to have. And you know, like go with God's service. I don't know. He he's just always kind of hurt. And I don't know when he is playing. It's it's kind of I don't know if you've seen the video on Twitter of just every time somebody would score on the other team, just the way he just shrugs. And just gets really upset. It might have been just watching it over and over and over again. Anytime anybody scores, he just like shrugs. 
I feel like, like, I watch. I feel like his legacy right now, if his career ended, is just that his assistant coach tried to fight him once. How <laughs> bad he was playing on defense. That's what sticks out to me. But anyways, love Isaiah Jackson. You can get him with the late round. Last round, um, I don't think that his numbers are going to climb that high. I think people are sleeping on him. So always happy to talk about Isaiah Jackson. Always. Um, we're getting towards the end here. Our schedule came out the other day, and I just wanted to touch on a little bit of that. Um, there are five teams that have 15 back-to-backs, so the high is 15, the low is 12. And unfortunately, two of those teams are the Dubs and the Clippers, also the Bulls. Worried about what was a loss to Austin. The Kings and the Jazz are the other ones. I'm less concerned about them. So I'm nervous about the Dubs and Clippers. Um, you know, 15 back-to-backs. Curry was resting on pretty much most, if not all, the back-to-backs last season. I think that they're going to be so cautious with him because Golden State's mind is just on that repeat. Champs. Uh, and just, I don't know. Uh, they have such a talented team that they kind of can take out pieces out here and there. And I just think after, after um, last year's injury, injury scare with Curry, Curry um, I think you I think kind of want to be as delicate as you possibly as can. can. So, so I feel, I feel like, like this might be one, one of the first, first years, years ever that I don't know, I don't know if I want if Curry in the top five. five. Now, I don't think I'll let him fall out of the first round. But... Like that's that's the potential for 15 of his games right off the bat, and that's not even counting like the inevitable like minor injury that you have to for some more some Uh Do you have anything to say about like, any of the Golden State guys? Yeah, I mean, like you said, they're probably not gonna ever play a back to back. Like Steve Kerr has never been shy about resting his stars yeah. um, when they need it, or even sometimes when they don't, just to prevent injuries. Like you said, they're they're gunning for another championship. They're not gunning for the best regular season record. So they're just, they've shown they don't care about that. They've shown that they just want rings and they don't really care what seat they are. So I think it's, you're also seeing with those guys missing at least 15 games, probably you're also seeing extra, like an extra 15 games for Jordan Poole to run yeah. the offense or Moses Moody and, and Jonathan Kuminga. And then also, Obviously, James Wiseman will kind of see it. He probably won't play back-to-backs either just because of his injuries. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, they signed Dante DiVincenzo, Jermichael Green, such a deep team that you can kind of look at those Warriors backups or starters along with them and just kind of say, okay, like, and Andrew Wiggins, I guess we'll see if they rest him on back-to-backs or not. Um, but just kind of saying like, hey, like these guys are going to have opportunities at least 15 games where they're going to, be able to shoot basically whenever they want because they're not going to have Curry and they're not going to have Clay, so those shots have to come from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, you know, like, like Jonathan, Jonathan Kaminga, he's, he's going to be another year older. older. He, he, was he was nineteen last season. Like, it's incredible. <laughs> incredible. The year that he, he had, had is incredible. incredible. He's, going he's going to be going better. To be better. Um, um, and then the and fact that they added, added Jermichael Green, Green, that just kind of screams to be like, hey, hey, we're going to be resting Trey this season. And I don't know how gracefully his race game is going to age. Like, mm-hmm. he kind of seems like one of those guys. Like, yes, he's an incredible player. Like, yes, he plays incredible defense. But, you know, as, as his athleticism continues to decline, how effective can he really be? Um, and those triple single lines, they're, like, a little bit annoying in fantasy. Like, I like Trey better in a roto format for his ability to rock it over dimes than I do in head-to-head leagues because it's tough when you're getting seven points a game from someone that you're taking kind of a mid-round pick on. And then you tack on the fact that I think he would very likely miss all 15 of those back-to-backs. Trey does not care about the regular season. Not at all. Uh, yeah, just something to mention. Just, just keep your eye on those guys. Take that into consideration. You, you might have to slash 15 games from the jump. And the same, and the same is, is true for these guys in LA, LA Kawhi and PG. I don't know Kawhi. Kawhi, 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 Kawhi slash those 15 right now. Plus, like, some random other games. Like, I don't know. 
I don't know. Like, we all know, we all know that Kawhi is a superstar. Sucks, we all know that Kawhi is a championship level player. player. We also know that he's incredibly frustrating to the roster of fantasy hoops, and he's 16 right now. So they're, so they're saying, saying you're going to have to take him with a second round pick. pick. Kawhi Leonard, 15 missed games off the bat. bat. Nah, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, I'd probably let somebody else just go ahead and take him there. Um, just off the bat, like you said, 15 missed games. Paul George, maybe, probably, mm-hmm. at least half of the 15 games. He's, with 19. 19. he's ranked 19. Ranked 19. Paul George. Like, again, I'm going to let somebody else do that. I'm <laughs> probably not going to. But then the other guy on the Clippers, I don't know how much this impacts fantasy, but I can't imagine John Wall playing back-to-backs oh, after not That's playing awesome. not playing 80 games over five years. I can't imagine he plays back-to-backs. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, there's so there's much so going on on the Clippers team. I just feel like they're like going to be gearing up for that full postseason season like, all year long. And, like, mm-hmm. like, the regular mm-hmm. season's just kind of this... this I mean, this I mean, is how the Clippers play. It's like one of the most frustrating teams when you watch them play. They have all the talent in the world. And when they go up against weaker opponents, it's like they're insulted that they have to beat them. <laughs> um, so, so, I don't know. I, don't know. Um, I, I think that I'm on all the Clippers to start this year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, also, we talked about Lonzo Ball at the top, top. 15 back to backs. backs. He's probably going to miss a lot of those. those. And he can, he can never stand for stand. So, so I don't know. I'm, I'm just really, really worried, worried about Lonzo uh, Ball this season. Mm-hmm. Um, um, on the 14 back to backs, the one that sticks out to me is Miami. Miami. We all know Jimmy Buckets. You know, he. He did, he did play, play in his credit. He played in a couple back to back sacks at the start of the season, but in the second half, half, half no, no, he was not he was playing back to back sacks. Uh, so, so I think so that I you think can pretty much slash slash close to 14, 14 games off him from the jump. Same, same with Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Um, um, I've been a I've huge, huge Jimmy Buckets fan forever, forever, but I don't, I don't think I can do it anymore. I don't. It's just he misses too much time. Like if 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 the regular season was the playoffs. <laughs> be a top yeah. five pick. But it's not. It's not. And he doesn't, he doesn't care. care. He wants he to win a championship, championship and he can. can. That's a really good, really good team. team. Yeah. So I don't so, know. I don't like 14 that's a lot. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. He's just like I mean, really, all the other superstars in the league that don't care about the regular season anymore. So he's going to miss the back to backs. Um, even if when he plays, he's just still phenomenal it's just not nearly as phenomenal as he is in the postseason that's right, right. i mean playoff lebron was a thing for a while it's the guy that's most similar to that in the aspect of just his play gets elevated so much in the postseason is jimmy butler but it's almost because he kind of just doesn't play very hard or at least as hard during the regular season but um and then kyle lowry just have no idea like kyle lowry was pretty bad in the postseason last season so i don't yeah. know if I touch him, like without the back-to-backs, just without even considering that, I don't know if I'd really want him on my roster. Yeah, I think yeah, I was actually, actually probably, probably off, off him before I. <laughs> this just adds to it. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but uh, who who do we think benefits, benefits here? Like, like, is it Tyler Durant? Interesting, interesting name here. A guy who was good in playoffs. I picked Durant. But like like back-to-backs could be an issue for him as well. But they could also kind of make it where Jimmy plays one and Vic plays the other. Is he a guy that has your attention at all? Probably a little bit. Um, I don't know what his ranking is off the top of my head, but he 181. 181. Yeah, so you can probably get him last last round. I would take a flyer on him. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's a former All Star that's still got like proven that he has the ability. Um, and then in Miami, will will he get the opportunity at least with these fourteen back to backs? You'd think so. Um, and then maybe Tyler Hero, like you mentioned, but Tyler Hero is so such a strange case. Like sometimes it feels like, oh, they want this guy to be uh, their future leading scorer. Like they want him here for fifteen seasons. And then other times it just feels like, why is he on the court? Like at times, like do do Heat fans like watching him play? Like. I still think he's incredibly talented, but it seems like at this point, um, you know, they're not looking to extend him yet. Uh, I think yeah. the deadline is October 18th. Um, they may just wait and try and just re-sign him as a restricted free agent if they don't trade him before that. It wouldn't shock me at all if they're just kind of 
they may just give him those minutes just to prove his value to increase his trade. It's Pat Riley playing games. He's just five steps ahead <laughs> of everybody else. So I could yeah. see Tyler Hero benefiting, but we'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, to okay, close this out here, here. Yeah, uh, 13 back to backs, no one, no one uh, scary uh, there. there. Uh, uh, so the 12 back to backs, this is the fewest back to backs. And so I'm going to call my eye was Denver's one of those teams. No, 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 no. And I think we had a word yesterday that Jamal Murray is going to be trying to get back for the preseason. That's huge, That's huge. Um, yeah. because uh, there's been a lot of bad news on that. On that. Um, so um, if he's so back by the preseason, you know, he's going he's gonna, gonna to be cautious. He's going to have minutes gonna have some some restrictions, restrictions. And probably and won't play in a majority of the back. But at least it's only 12. Maybe he plays in size for the this year. I don't know. Does that, like, did either yesterday's news or the 12 back to back sex discourage you? Yesterday's news was not discouraged. How do you feel about your watch? I mean, I think it it encourages me. I was writing that blurb, and then I went and checked his uh his ranking, and he's seventy two on Yahoo. That's so, nice. considering you know his healthy seasons, there's only one time he hasn't been better than seventy two, and his last full healthy season, he was top fifty, top forty guy. I would probably just grab him, just kind of say like, hey, like let's play for the playoffs, assuming that. Uh, he's fully healthy, and maybe if he's not playing back to back still, then he should be healthy um, and playing in full when he is out on the court. And he's just too good to let slide that far. So yeah, I, I think yeah. between him and Michael Porter Jr., I guess is a little bit more iffy to me than Jamal Murray, just because we've seen Jamal Murray play like, I mean, especially in the bubble, just one of the yeah. best players in the world. I wouldn't call him that, but you, we've seen him produce like that. So yeah, yeah. I would love to grab him especially at his rank maybe in like in the fifth round sixth round a guy that can be a third round guy yeah yeah i mean i, I mean I, I, that, that, I don't think I don't that's, that's unreasonable to say like, like he's like going to be better, better. um you know, know, it's, it's going to take, take him a little, little, little bit to find his footing, his footing. But, but over the second, the second half, half he could be, be a flamethrower flame flame i mean that's who he is so yeah uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, all we got for you today. today. Noah, I appreciate, I appreciate you joining me in today's, today's pod. pod. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I guess we're going to go, go ahead and wrap this up. This up. Uh, we, uh, will we will see y'all uh, next, uh, next Friday. Friday. Sounds good. Thanks, Jared. No problem. No problem. Adios. Adios. See ya.